right, so we are finding our target for the night. You see how high it is. It is way up there in the northwest. Let's get a land. Let's get to lay the land again. So that's where the sun's setting. You see Venus up there. If you can see with my, it's not dark enough yet to see my laser up there. But there's a Kim Trail. Let's go around here and see. It's really clear tonight. There's Cirrus. Up there is uh, Orion. Let me see if I can get it in there for you. So there's the box, the rectangle. There's the belt. Up there's Jupiter. And over here is the Pleiades. There is Mars up there. Mars right there. Now what we're going to try to get, it's getting late in the year for this. But you can see the angle the sea stars at up into the northwest there. What we're going to try to get here is maybe a, one of the last season shots where you get a lot of time here this spring on Andromeda. So it's aimed right up there. Can't see it at all, but that's where it's aimed at. We're going to zoom in on that as long as we can here. So that's probably about maybe two or three hours worth, I'm guessing. So that's what we're going for tonight. And so it's out there. We're coming back here, and he is just sitting here and sitting out here enjoying the night, aren't you, buddy? Yeah, you're just enjoying the evening, aren't you? Yes, yes, you are. Now we're gonna get uh, the rest of the the rest of the Dobsonian set up here while the while the uh, sea starts doing its work. So I can tell you right now, the collimation is not even close on this thing. It is not even close. I'm going to be working on he that here. I haven't done collimation in a long time. So I've got the laser collimator in there. First, I have to make sure the laser collimator is collimated. I think it's going to be hard to do here, but I'm going to try. So there's the collimator. We'll turn it on here. Now, the idea is if the collimator needs to be collimated, otherwise you're not going to get your, your telescope collimated. So I don't know if you can tell in there, but we're not, we're not on the dot at all there. You can kind of see it right down there. See it? So we got to get that in the dot. But the question is, is this thing collimated? Let me turn it up get a little brighter, a little brighter now where you can see it. So the angle's not right, but the idea now is, is this thing collimated? So what you do is you're going to, I'm going to turn, make sure it's snug in there, and you turn it in a circle, and the dot itself should not move anywhere. If it doesn't move anywhere, then you're fine. And you can see as, as I'm turning this, you see the collimator itself is turning. Or the collimation tool, the, the circles, making a circle, which tells me that's not collimated, and that's a problem. So I'm gonna have to work on that to get this thing collimated. You way you do that, I've never done it before. But you have to, there's some screws in here to, to pop off, where you actually have to collimate this. So that's gonna be problematic, because I've never done that before. So we will try and see the best we can do with it. Can't be too difficult. But yeah, I think if I'm doing that right, yeah, it is not. It is not. This is not collimated itself. So there's that. Okay, it is a beautiful evening here. It's February 25th. It's about 7.30 at night. We're going to go out and check on the sea star here. And clear as can be tonight. There's no, the moon's just about a new moon. So we're going to be good all night. So let's check on the sea star there. It is up and aimed at, let me go show you where it's at here. So up and aimed right about there. You, you can't really see it, I know, because my camera's not that great. Uh, we're, we're getting one of the last shots of M31 for the year here, though. But it's a really interesting time of the year here. Let me talk about, let me tell you what I mean here by that. Let me turn this off for just a moment. So it's a really crazy time of the year in that we are, uh, we are get in uh, some last images of M31, which is up in Cassiopeia region, if you're familiar with that. But as you can see, it's in, let me go down here farther, it's in the western sky, and that's going to be setting pretty quickly. So that's one of the signs for me in the early evening that we're starting to shift into the spring constellations. Another sign of that is, and it's kind of, to me, it's this time of year, it's kind of, uh, it's an ode to, or a goodbye to all these grand um, winter constellations, right? That all center around Orion for a lot of people. So Orion's now, if you look here at this time of night, this is uh, just 618 in the evening. Gosh, it seems like it was just early September, October when this was just peaking up in the east at this time of the evening. But now it's 
at 6:18 in the evening. It's it's south now. See, it's due south, and so that's a sure sign that winter is starting to give way to spring. And so as the night goes along, well, I wanted to get I want to get one last uh, great image of Andromeda in. And that's really the first focus tonight to kind of say goodbye to it here annually. Uh, you can still capture it. You're just going to have less and less time to do it until later in the year now. And then also, you know, it's a great time to still get some great last shots. There's still plenty of time before Orion sets and the Orion Nebula that everybody loves to get in the horse head and, and the triangle and all those other things. But as the evening goes along, you'll see that here we go. It's going into the west. Orion's starting to sink into the west. And if we go over here and move to the east now, we move to the east, we're going to start to see the constellations of spring start to move in. So let's advance that, and you'll see there's Leo coming up. And we'll see uh, everything else start to come in. And what that's a sign of, really, I'm zoned in on there. So let's get the, let's get over here on Virgo if I can. So what we're going to see is Virgo is going to start to come up in the east here. And that is the sign for me of a whole different season. It's the spring is what that means to me. So it's going to start rising. It's 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock, Virgo's coming up now. And with Virgo and everything surrounding that, so all the areas surrounding this up into here, it now becomes what I like to call, or a lot of people like to call, it's galaxy season. So there are so many galaxies in there. And if you have a sea star, you'll see them all. They're going to start to become the objects that are, the, are tonight's best. And some of them already are. And that's the it's a favorite time of year for me. It's if you've heard of a Messier marathon just to uh, try to see all of them in one night you're getting in that time of the year when it would be good to do that still going to be a long night you're still going to want some coffee but it's a good time to do that but for tonight anyway for me this is kind of an ode to ode to ode to the winter and as I mentioned earlier I want to get one last image and I'll be sharing those in a second of the whole experience here of uh, that fun experience of capturing Andromeda, the Andromeda Galaxy M31, as it uh, sinks into the west here. If I can get over, get over there with my software. There we go. All that stuff's going to be sinking down and come to uh, be something we'll look at later in, later into the year, but a real shift to Virgo and all of galaxies there. And I'll try to capture maybe some of that later on this evening here as we go along. But that's it. That's what we're going to try to do tonight. It's a great evening. It's really clear. It's been cold here. We were down below zero last weekend. It's Wednesday now, and we got up into the 50s today. It's going to be that way for the next week. I'm not sure how clear it's going to be. This may be the last clear night I have. There's clouds rolling in in the morning, and it may be the last uh, the last opportunity I have to uh, get some shots in until until a few days from now. So I'll have plenty of time to work on that Dobsonian and try to get that collimated, ready for the next clear skies. Okay, so I'm doing this for anyone who doesn't have a sea star, or if you're just new to it, to show you what it looks like. So on the left-hand side, you, you see what I see on my Samsung 23G Ultra, and on the right, I've just got a map of the sky for Andromeda, which I'm trying to get the images of. You can see the messages that pop up on the screen. It's Right now, it's uh, finding its way to the target and making sure there's nothing blocking it. Then it does a horizontal calibration. And I'll speed this up in a minute here, but this is just the routine that you'll see if you try to get an image or have the C star take an image for you. So now it's doing the horizontal calibration, 60%. I'll speed it up here just a little bit to make it go a little bit faster here. Uh, so you'll see that it takes a little while sometimes to do that, to get the horizontal calibration. Before long, you'll see it's 80%, 90% moving to the target. Initialization, it's 99%. Initializations in progress. You can see the smudge of the Andromeda galaxy already behind there, M31. Now it's enhancing the image, 30%, 40 You'll see the image appear in just a moment, and you'll see what it looks like just after uh, one exposure of 10 seconds here real quickly. I'll show you what that looks like here, where I'm at in, in uh, some Bortle 3, probably more Bortle 4 in that area because it's northwest of where I'm at. 
Now it's enhancing. There's the one image. Now it's going to go. I'm going to do some auto framing here. It's the composition you do. The area that I want in that big, larger red box is the whole area that I want the image to be instead of the smaller blue one, which would be by default what you get out of the S50. So there you go. There's, uh, there's the smudge that you see. It's going to be a 10 second exposure real quick. There it is. It's 10 seconds. Now it's building the mosaic for the entire composition that I wanted. So that's after one minute what you see. Then I'm going to go back and you'll start to see it build out the mosaic which is one picture stacked upon another 10 seconds each until it fills up the screen and keeps repeating that routine to make the image brighter and brighter. So there we are. We're 10, 11 minutes, 12 minutes. I'll let it go there, 14, 15. Then we'll stop here in a moment and I'll take a, uh, I'll denoise it just to kind of show what it looks like to get rid of some of the, uh, the, the noise in the picture. So it's still filling out. It's about 22, 30 minutes. There you go. That's 44 minutes denoised what it looks like that's pretty good for uh, my skies now I'll let it keep going here and we're going to build out to the final image I only spent about an hour on it here because I wanted to um, do some other things here the way the, the evening turned out so I denoise it again take 60 seconds at this point to denoise it it's sometimes a little less now I'm playing with it with the brightness of the contrast to get the image I finally want and there you go that's what you get that's what you get after about an hour or 52 minutes of exposures, 10 seconds each captured. So that was the end uh, in the morning. Started the clouds started to move in unexpectedly. So that was really the end of my evening here. So I went out in the morning to get the sea star before it started to maybe rain. You can see the clouds above there as as we're starting to get into the morning morning hours. Turning it off, hoping I can get in before it rains here. I think I'm in good shape though. But that mushy ground. It's like a marsh out there this time of year where I live in the yard. You can kind of see the skies are going to be cloudy, and I don't think I'm going to have another another clear day for, for quite some time here. So I'll be working on that, Dob, that uh, Dobsonian, the calibration and the collimation with that laser. I may have to get my Cheshire out, my old Cheshire from my old uh, 1993 days, my Cheshire collimator. If I can't get the laser, I get my help to do it for me. Uh, there is six o'clock in the morning. There are the clouds. They have moved in and that's going to be about it. So thanks for watching. So remember when you're feeling very small and insecure, how amazingly unlikely is your birth. And pray that there's intelligent life somewhere out in space. Because I'm afraid that we've been cheated here on earth.